Hi, I'm Frank Stephenson. I'm a car designer and I've been designing cars for the last 30 years. Quite a bit of experience. Today, what I'm going to be doing is looking at these concept cars and telling you what I think about them. If they're real, if they could be real, what are the good points and maybe what are the bad points? So let's just get started and here we go. Wow. I've always loved purple, that's for sure. Yeah, this is definitely something that's grabbing me right from the start. I haven't seen anything like this before in my life, so I wonder if this is on planet Earth. The hexagon pop-up elements, nice, wow. Uh, what do they actually do? I have no idea. I'll tell you what's very inspiring for me also is the fact that it doesn't even look like a Mercedes, which shows to me that they have moved pretty far into the future, enough into the future to make it sort of the difference between a Neanderthal and a, a Homo sapien today. The car seems to be welcoming him in, and I find it uh, quite exciting in advance that there is really no steering wheel or pedals or buttons. There's some kind of interaction going on with his hand on the on one of the control panels to either start or activate the vehicle. Fantastic. I'm instantly attracted to it and I want to learn more because I'm seeing things that I've never before seen. Simple things, the wheels, the doors, the actual integration of all the panels to each other. It's more like it's been grown rather than produced. So my verdict on this car is uh, I'd have to give it high marks for the shape. It's very distinctive, although it's organic. And when you create organic things, it's very easy to soften things and become a little bit less characterful. But this one holds its character in its uh, unique shape. The feeling is that the interior and the exterior are one, which is great. It's almost like the interior is growing uh, out of the exterior or they're becoming one. The actual visibility of the car and the glass, the use of the glass technology seems very, very advanced. I love that. Yeah, I wish I was living in that, that century. Back again, and now we're looking at another concept car. Uh, this is definitely a Toyota. I recognize it immediately. And again, it's a nice concept in terms of turning turning the direction of Toyotas from today into another direction. I'm not the biggest fan of the current look that Toyota has taken, but this now is starting to show me that they have the courage and the ability to, to, to do something fresh. Um, again, they're playing on the fact that uh, technology will allow us to do incredible things with glass and, uh, and visibility. So they're... Um, showing that in a very dramatic way. The only feeling I get right from the bat is, just to put it very, very simply, the wheels do not match. And I hate that when one wheel on one side does not match the wheel uh, on the same side. So the design is, is very, very strange in that respect. The design on first impression uh, rocks you, obviously. It uh, makes you stand up and have a look at it, but I'm getting the impression that somebody worked on the front and somebody else worked on the back and they didn't like each other, or didn't have much conversation. Um, it does look a little bit um, confusing in the sense of different shapes, different forms uh, that don't really work 100% well together are made into one single car. So uh, as impressive as it is as a, uh, as a new idea, a new direction for Toyota, which I would welcome, uh, at the same time, I don't think it's the right solution in terms of a car, uh, say, destined to be with us in 10, 15, 20 years. Now we're moving to the next one, which is obviously an, an Audi, seeing those typical four rings and the construction in the studio. You can see the prototype development of this car, this concept, um, and they're stating that they want to do more than what's expected. So they're presenting it here at the Shanghai, uh, the world premiere at the Shanghai Motor Show. And they're bringing it out on stage with the headlights on. A lot of people interested in it, photographing it, obviously, as they always do with new cars. First impression, mysterious, uh, very, very wide entry into the car on the sides. Nice, clean back end, very refined. Uh, oof, a lot of graphics going on in the front. In general, I like the shape of the car. It's uh, advanced, but not so far advanced that it looks like a cartoon. So I think Audi has a tough time now. They 
essentially painted themselves into a corner with that mahusive grill that they've uh, incorporated over the last few generations. Interior, I, I have to say the interior is very interesting. Might be in some ways a little bit boring because when you do go to autonomous driving at some point, you might want to be able to turn that seat around and interact. Gosh, yeah, they've made an Audi out of something without a big grill, so that's uh, that's pretty impressive. And moving on, it looks like we've come to a concept car now where somebody is actually relaxing while the car itself is, is taking care of the drive. So this is an interesting concept of the future where the vehicle does the driving and you are at your freedom to do what you want inside the car. It's kind of like your own room on the road, almost as, if, almost as if you're on a train. There's not a lot of shape or excitement in the shape of it at all. It's just a lot of glass, see-through glass and pretty rectangular shape uh, uh, from the top view. Uh, I don't know which side is, which way is forward and which way is backwards. It's almost a symmetrical design forward and back. So that really kills it for me. I wouldn't be very excited to own a product that resembles like it was influenced by, by a box almost. Um, I wouldn't say I'm super excited about the graphics of the front end or the lighting technology. It doesn't look to be very distinctive. I mean, it's it's not that bad, obviously, but, but it doesn't have... A, enough character, I think, to, to make it uh, something 100% desirable. I can see it more as being used as a tool than as a car. Well, finally, a car that's being able to go off-road in a 4x4 manner that doesn't look like it's come from the war zone. Although it does look quite intimidating, it looks more practical than something that's just... Uh, sort of with a military usage. This is definitely an outdoor lifestyle vehicle. What car is this? Oh, this is the Audi again, I think. Oh, that's interesting. They're using drone technology and GPS technology to help out with the driving of the vehicle. I love the idea that they're using additional technology to help them out, although I wouldn't understand why they have two drone-like uh, objects illuminating the road ahead of them. Headlights should be doing a good enough job for that. Um, and I'd hate for one of those drones uh, uh, to have an incident and suddenly lose the amount of light that you need to get home on. But there's a lot of use for a vehicle like this. I can see this car being a big hit. Not fluid design, which isn't a bad thing. It's uh, very Audi-ish, like I think, in the sense of what Audis in the future might be looking for. That would surely be a nice toy to own. I wouldn't say it's basically a, a, an all everyday vehicle, but if you have an, uh, the desire to have a vehicle specifically for uh, an adventurous lifestyle, this could be it. Now we're looking at a single volume car, which I like the idea of. Mercedes has done quite a great job on, on this one here. I've always loved this one. I've followed it. Uh, it's been a, a good inspiration for a lot of things that I've worked on in terms of uh, the packaging and the seating uh, requirements and seating uh, solutions. It looks elegant. I mean, it's hard to put a price on a car like this, but you wouldn't expect something like this to be, you know, your everyday cheap car that gets you from A to B. This has got some excellent solutions that uh, look very innovative. I love the idea of a uh, of a honed design in such a way that the glass doesn't even look like it's been put into the car. It's just blended into the car. Um, the detail is fantastic on the inside of the car and the exterior. There are a lot of uh, sensible and intelligent uses of high-end technology on the areas that allow it, on the side panels of the doors, for example. It's active electronics. Um, Looks like a great place to spend a trip and, 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 and go places in. Almost if they could make this sort of your next uh, luxury limousine and not being super high priced, I think something like this would, would rock, rock the world pretty well. Love the new color treatment on it. It looks uh, kind of like a blend between alloy and chrome. It's using advanced electronics in, in, sense, of, in the sense of safety. Uh, the lighting is interesting. It does have a signature face that could be adopted in the future to make a, a unique look to Mercedes. Um, no mirrors on the exterior, no visible door handles except for some type of graphics. But this car definitely does something for me in terms of looking like a car uh, that would, could, and should be the future of automotive design.
So we reviewed a few. So I reviewed here a few concepts today. I think they're all pretty exciting. Uh, it's great to see what directions we potentially could be going in, in the future. And obviously, I like some more than others. I've always loved concept cars because they're our way of sort of letting go and predicting. Uh, wouldn't say predicting, but analyzing what the future could look like is always a, a, a great inspiration and great creative outlet for designers. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd have to say it was the last one that I saw, the Mercedes, that kind of shows the direction that I would love to see the future of uh, of sedans, of, of our uh, cars that get us from one place to the other uh, in terms of uh, autonomous technology and the environment inside the car being able to be transformed for different uh, uses and, and, and basically the overall technology such that it doesn't look like it's made out of pieces. It looks more like it's... Uh, it, it, it's it's an organic type of design, although obviously it's not. Uh, it does come across as mu much more natural looking and less intimidating looking than, than a lot of these scarier looking vehicles that sort of uh, look almost like they're uh, influenced by reptiles or very aggressive types of designs. I like tend to like uh, cars that feel natural that you want to walk up and, and, and wash by yourself, you know, wash by hand and massage the car and feel the surfaces and and they have obviously the interesting details that uh, capture your attention. Um, and I think uh, we don't have to try too hard to achieve that. The harder we achieve, the less timeless the cars become and uh, and, and date much more quickly. So I think it's uh, it's a fine balance and in, in, in the finesse of the designer to achieve a car that instantly looks new, instantly looks desirable, and that you can almost instantly fall in love with. So that last one does it for me.